Lamed Zayin. The Moral was coming to explain the dialogue between Rabbi Yossi Mekismo and this person that he met on the way. So he asked a number of questions. So the last question he asked was, he says, do you want to come live imonu bimekomenu? What do you have to say imonu? He should have said bimekomenu. Do you want to live in our community? What's the imonu? Right? He said to Rabbi Yosem, from where do you come from? So he says, He didn't ask him. The person says, you know, you come from uh, Yerushalayim. You have to start to describe what Yerushalayim is. I asked him, from where do you come from? You come from London, Lahavdil, from Yerushalayim, Lahavdil. Everything that today is Lahavdil. Blatantly, it's Lahavdil. Vod mihigid lo shlohoyim mokum mokum Torah. Shama shim atod no sinli kol kesef zov shavolam in in ador elu mokum Torah. Who said this person's community didn't have Torah in it? I will not only live in a community that has Torah. Well, how did he know this person's community didn't have Torah? Ule mikoma gam came mokum Torah. That if you conduct yourself with Torah, it will lead you. Hear this? Why in this world it says it will lead you, it will guide you. Kever oma tishmo lecho. Well, it's obvious, right? In this world, you need guidance. You're alive. In the grave, what does one need? You need shmirah. Right? It's Tishmo Lecha. Right? Then it says, Ulo Mabo Hitzichecho. Right? That's Tishchecho. What, what, what are you going to engage in? What is, what is the subject matter you're going to discuss? You don't need, in Ulo Mabo, you don't need guidance. This is after fact. Right? The Mora says, Mora says, Nabo de Zorah, Misha Torch, Berev Shabbos, Yochel B'Shabbos. Mora says, at the end of time, you know, the w- nations of the world are going to come with a, with a claim. What about us? You left us out in the cold. So after back and forth, where they're deserving of nothing, they say, but it's still not fair. So Mara says, what do you mean? We should talk about Shabbos, Yochum, Shabbos. You know, you prepare for Shabbos, you have what to eat on Shabbos. You go and you goof off, and you're out on the golf green, all of a sudden now you want to eat? You should have prepared for yourself. The nations of the world did nothing from this. So why are they deserving all of this? Hashem gives them the, the, the last chance. And it's a college story of sukkah. So he's saying over here, it says, Lo ma'bhitisichecho. What, uh, what are you talking the world to come? This is after fact. This, this is after Misha Torah, Be'er of Shabbos, Yochel B'Shabbos. Vo'chei v'kro li'akes li'azov, ma'inin ze'a kosov l'kan. Vo'od yesh k'tzaz she'elos she'sholu b'kan v'edem yikor v'yisbaru gamkein. Pirush. Dover ze'er. Ma she'oma she'ohyo mahalich v'derech yichidi. See, by us it doesn't say, it says, he was traveling on the way by himself. Well, seemingly he was by himself. Right? There was no one with Rabbi Yosef Kisma. You think a person of this dimension says, an Odom Choshim should not go out by himself. He should have two people accompanying him. Rabbi Yosef Kisma, seemingly he didn't have anybody with him, which is to a Chiddush. He's not at all. He was, he was one of the, the Godel Ador. The Gemara in Avodah Zarah speaks about him and Reb Charanyu ben Trajo, Reb Chanin ben Trajo, Reb Chanin ben Trajo in Israel, Yosef ben Kisma, does he have a share in the world to come? This is Reb Chanin ben Trajo in one of the Asurigim Arugim Malchus, Esr of Yosef ben Kisma, to give an evaluation as he should have a share in the world to come. So who's Reb Yosef ben Kisma? So we're talking about he, he was minimally Reb Chanin ben Trajo's peer, minimally his peer, maybe even greater. So a man like that walks by himself. Seemly, person's traveling himself on the way, and he has no, no one is accompanying him. What should accompany him? Yask Torah is the accompaniment. Torah protects you. And if you're fully engrossed in Torah, so you're really in a state of solitude. 
You're removed from everything around you. Lo kimi. Shosi beso. Afal push pisho osi. Lo mei basic rav. Enze his bodu dos kimo misho osi bider chichidi. Shum his bodi legamri. Umitoch kach mach shapte dvuka betoran legamri. You know, it's interesting. Maybe you, if this we could even understand, it says a person who person's Osik the Torah and he interrupts his Torah, he says, Mano Ilunzu. And we had the, the Mishnah. Ma Mano Ilunze. He says, How beautiful is the tree? He says, I'll raise him as Chai ben Avsho. I mean, how do you interrupt your, your Torah study? To, to admire nature. Right? They, if you want to be studying, you want to admire nature, see Hashem's hand in nature is one thing. But to interrupt, Talmud Torah can cool for that. Harizim is chayb and Now, where do you notice the tree? So seemingly, is he studying in his house? If he's studying in his house, he doesn't see a tree. So seemingly, he's walking on the road. So he's speaking over here. We're speaking about you, Mizbode Legamri, Betokach Mashavta, Dvuka, Batora, Legamri. We're talking about he's fully immersed in Torah, fully immersed. Vomaloshin Mahalich Bederech, Vomaloshin Bederech. Ki Aloshin Mahalich Bederech, Enlo Lavoyo. Mahalech kerochiv dami b'chomokum kachu ki holech shem atorhu a mahalech ein a tor. You want to say what is a person when he's walking? Mahalech means fully engrossed. He's the he's not holech he's mahalech. Umnei dvekusa b'torah derech hoyagorim shomerim metin imatonosili kol kesef v'zosh ba'olam ki me'achshu kol kach hoy mizbodi b'derech atorah hoyadovik b'torah legamri. Achlo rotsli poreid men ator afilum yidno lo kol kesef zosh ba'olam lahoros al goldu his bodu shoy lo batoro lo roas odom shabo kenegdul haschi mo bisholom. The question is yes. One be greeted first. Rabbi Yochan Mizaki initiated always initiated the conversation, the acknowledgement even to a goy. So Rabbi Yosef Mikisman wanted to acknowledge this person. The answer is because he he himself was in another world. He was so fully engrossed in Torah. You know the story. There's a book that came out about three years ago, four years ago. It's called um, Zal Rebbeuch Ber Libowitz Zechet Zarek Levrocha. It's called Doim Doim La Malach Hashem Tzvados. So um, the story was the war just broke out, and one of the people he received a telegram from his parents that he should come to where, where whatever city in Poland, leave the yeshiva and come before they shut down the border. So he went, he had to have his passport, had to be something, he needed some a visa, passport. So he went to Rav Boruch Ber's son, his name is Rav Ruvin Gruzovsky, who was the Roshiv and Torvadas after the war. And he handled all the, the bureaucracy of the yeshiva. Anything had to do with the administration, even though he was also, he said, one of the shiurim. So Rav, Bar, so Rav Ruvin, Rudzovsky sent him to Reb Baruch Bear to, uh, to speak to him about, about the, the passport, the visa, leaving the yeshiva. Should he leave? Should he not leave? Should he ignore the telegram from his parents? And um, factually, he left. His parents were ready. It was a mistake to leave. So uh, he comes. Re- it was Lithuania. So he comes to uh, Reb Baruch Bear. Reb Baruch Bear, he would spend a few hours before he would say Yashir. And when he was immersed in that shear, if you look at him, his eyes, and you would speak to him, he was like lassi eyed. He was like in a different world. If you would look at him, you'd see he, he, he wasn't in touch with you. So he comes to Rebbech Bear, you know, he comes to the door, and Rebbech Bear lifts his head, and he speaks to him for about 20 minutes. And Rebbech Bear looks at him, and he, after he finished 20 minutes, he realized nothing registered. The conversation didn't register. And he see, realizes, you know, he's in a different world. Because th- th- he was so immersed in the learning before he would say a shear, he was out of touch. Finally, gradually, gradually, he was coming back to himself that he was able to, you know, to respond, to understand what he was saying, to be able to respond, to advise him what he should do. We're talking about his, we're talking about, this is Reb Baruch Be, we're talking about Reb Yosef ben You know, if, if Reb Chaim Ozer, he, was, he had to have heart, heart surgery, and he couldn't take anesthesia, wh- or whatever they called it then, ether, because of, it would, it would, because of his state of health, he couldn't do it. So he says, just tell me the lengthy operation, 
and I will become engrossed in thought, you could operate on me. And that's what he did. Felt nothing. He was totally in a different world. He did not feel the knife cutting living flesh. Did not feel it whatsoever. They told him it would take two hours, three hours, four hours. He got it. He immersed himself in subject matter, which took six hours until they finished the operation. So these are people who lived 70 years ago. So Rabbi Yosef and Kisma, but we can't even relate to what they were. We can't relate to what the Rambam was. So Rabbi Yosef and Kisma, you could understand what he was. Not possible. So when we speak, he was engrossed in, in learning. He was a different world. He meets somebody on the road. He should acknowledge him. He didn't even notice the man. He didn't notice him because that was the question. Why did he acknowledge him? The answer is he didn't notice him. So he acknowledged him first. So once he acknowledged him, somehow that was a level of distraction. He came to himself. So that's how they engaged. So where am I coming from? You offer me all the money in the world, gems, diamonds. What, it's irrelevant. Where I'm coming from, this is all meaningless. Because he was experiencing that level of attachment that there's nothing comparable to it at that moment. The question is, why did he notice him? Right? He says, he, sh he interrupted. Because he was so attached, this is like, you know, one shouldn't interrupt his Torah study to admire the beauty of, of, of nature. So here he should. He had no obligation initially, but once a person knowledges you, then you have an obligation to respond. No, but it's interesting. I mean, you know, the story with the, with the Vilna Gon. You know, he was in the middle of saying a shir, and one of the students, there was a clap of thunder, and he said the brocha. So he was upset at the student. So the student didn't understand what he, what, why is the Rebbe upset? He said, it's not He said, I'm not upset. You said the brocha. I'm upset that you heard the thunder. That's what I'm upset. Because if you wouldn't fully engross the shir, you wouldn't have heard the thunder. So I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, the way the Maharal is learning, he did notice him, but he didn't want to interrupt because he was involved in learning. So once he acknowledged him, then he had an obligation to respond to be continued. <laughs>